Hello, hello, hello. This is attorney Mike Gravel. I'm coming to you from Chicago as usual. I thought I'd do one more day with my cool, cool air show backdrop. We've got a lot to get through today. We got a dude crying in court, as you can tell from the thumbnail. We've got uh, we've got our an update on Mr. Justice over in Judge Maribel's courtroom. <laughs> oh. And then we've got a real stem winder with Judge Boyd. Judge Boyd is cool. I haven't I haven't checked in on her courtroom in a while. That was sent to me by Sammy Samala. Uh, the the Maribel stuff was sent to me by Lauren, the pet lover. And the other one was sent to me by everybody, and I saw it anyway. So um, it's all good stuff. Let's get it going because there's 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 a lot, a lot to get through. Court does call the case of the people versus Urban Sims. Caitlin Kirby on behalf of the people. James Gallagher, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Urban Sims. Mr. Sims, good morning. If you could please state your name for the court. Good morning, Urban Sims. All right. Ms. Blair. Yes, good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Sims is before the court for a show cause hearing. Mr. Sims is in violation of the terms ordered um, by this court. Um, in that he is non-compliant with the domestic violence program. Um, he's failed to report to probation after May of 2022. He has violated the no contact order again with the victim, Bridget Whitaker. On May 20th, 2022, um, he had contact with her. I provided the court with a copy of the police report from East Point. Um, which it shows that also in that report, Your Honor, it's alleged that he used assault of threatening, intimidating behavior with her. Um, and there was another police report on July 1st of 2022, um, <clears throat> which I also did provide to the court, um, which shows he used alcohol. There was a PBT result of a 0.084. Um, Mr. Sims also has had prior violations of the no contact order in this case, Your Honor, on June 8th of 2021 and again on November 23rd of 2021. Um, I believe on both of those instances, Your Honor, he did do some jail time and was placed on a GPS tether. Given the numerous violations of the no contact order and his noncompliance with the other terms, Probation is recommending that Mr. Sir, Mr. Sims serve 365 days in jail with credit for 48 days that he has served and to serve the balance and that the court waive his remaining terms of probation and discharge him without improvement. All right. Very good. Okay. So j just a quick summary. So he got caught drinking, uh, violating the no contact order and got picked up on another charge. I, I don't know if there were any other terms he could violate, but, but the, those are all the terms I'm aware of, and he violated them all. Mr. Gallagher or Mr. Sims? Well, Your Honor, I can say this, and Mr. Sims can uh, certainly correct me if I'm making any misstatements here, but um, he would contest, Your Honor, oh. any uh, some of the allegations, uh, specifically any assaultive uh, behavior uh, towards the uh, victim in this matter. Uh, also, I believe the drinking of alcohol. Um, now, the other... Congratulations, Tom. Good luck on your first day of law school. Woo! Enjoy that Socratic method. It's coming your way. Uh, conditions that were mentioned by uh, Probation Officer Pilar, I don't believe he can test, for example, uh, not being not reporting uh, since that time frame um, and not uh, completing the one uh, the one course. So, uh, and Mr. Sims, correct me if I'm making any misstatements here. Is that correct, Mr. Sims? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, you know, he, he contests so some of them, Mr. but not all. Mr. Gallagher, just so that I'm clear, he's contesting the use of alcohol that's my understanding is that correct mr sims no i i, I don't I, i'm understanding the question are you contesting uh the use of alcohol are you saying that i you i'm using alcohol that was one of the allegations no that on july 1st you had you had drank and I, on july 1st yeah, that was when can't when you had the altercation, or I won't say altercation, but when you had the run in with Canton PD, and they gave you a PBT. Uh, I don't remember. Come on, Judge, he can't remember. He was drunk. Okay, all right. 
All right, go ahead, Mr. Gallagher. I'm sorry. Well, yes. Yeah, so you're on. I apologize, Judge. Uh, so he's contesting some of the allegations, Your Honor, but not all. Uh, for example, the reporting to probation, the uh, non, not uh, completing uh, the domestic violence course uh, that was stated by Probation Officer Pilar. Uh, and then he does contest some of the other allegations. Okay, very good. Mr. Sims, anything you want to say? Yes, Your Honor. I, I apologize for for violating my probation, Your Honor, but I would never come in contact with, with her only because of that day because her and the children were stranded and there was no one to pick them up. My kids was, they was sitting at a motel with no shoes on. I don't know who she was with. And that day I had to pick them up. No, I and there's no one that I have on my family and her family that could help us to try to keep me and her from even connecting. But your honor, we have a five month old child in the hospital who's his lungs are not doing well. He's, he might not make it. I just, like I said, I'm sorry for violating, but I'm not a violent person. And I, I just beg you to give me another chance. I don't want to be here and lose my child. I was working. I'm doing the best I can to provide for these children. I'm struggling, and and, and the only reason why I didn't report because I had no phone. I okay, so here's the problem. I, to the extent that he has a child in the hospital that that's sick, I have all the sympathy in the world. Although his credibility is so poor, I don't know that I believe it. I'm not calling him a liar. I'm just saying I don't know the facts, and his credibility is bad. So to the extent that that's the case, I feel bad for him. But this other this this crying thing. I'm sorry, as a man, it's hard to take. You guys can all get mad at me if you like, but I'm a man, and it's just not our natural response to things, me or any of the guys I know. You get mad, you might be sad about something, but uh, a public display of crying is just not how we cope with things. So when I see it, I just think fake. The end. I had no money to, to pay for a phone. But my mother, you know, she seemed to to get a little irritated by me living with her. So I had. I bet she did. I bet she was irritated by you living with her. To, to do all I can to try to fix my own house up, and I was just out here struggling. I had Not an e. my my bill get broke down, and I had no way of communicating with Miss Valera. And I've been on the I've been on the best I could do. And I never did anything wrong, but but trying to be with my child. Fair enough, Betsy. I, I concede that point. I, I I guess I just don't believe him on that front either. But to the extent that that's true, th that makes it plausible. Children and do what I can for them. Just throw myself on the mercy of the court to please give you another chance. <laughs> And I, I don't have ability. anything to, to add, okay. Judge. I was just gonna I was just gonna state what he just stated. So um thank you, Judge. All right. Um initially the problem is that on June 21st of 2021, before before the plea, you admitted to a bond violation um on that day. And so I won't say I let it slide, but we I gave you the additional, I think it was five days. Um, and then I suspended or 50 days balance suspended. Anyway, I didn't do anything at that point. You came up on August 2nd of 2021. You were compliant with the program. Um, when Judge Simpson starts uh, reviewing all the breaks he's previously given you, it's not a good sign. And then I set a review hearing, I think, on October 18th. October 18th rolled around. You were doing well. We, Ms. Valera felt comfortable waiving your appearance. 
and we continued the terms as previously ordered. And set it the next hearing, I think for, well, set the next hearing for January 10th. Apparently we couldn't go that far because on December 3rd, we had to issue a bench warrant um, for you. Um, we caught up with you prior to December 13th. Um, and at that time, sir, you, you still had gone to her residence. You weren't supposed to be there. Um, you had contact with her by virtue of going there. And then you had picked up a new criminal matter. And that time I didn't just <clears throat> throw it away. I just said you, you had already been in 12 days by the time we got to you. So I gave, I just gave you 15 days, gave you credit for the 12 we served. Uh, we put you on a GPS so that we could monitor where you were going and have an exclusion zone so that you could deal with that. Uh, that was in December. We then get to February, and again, with all of those things, seemed to be doing okay. We waived your appearance. We continued the terms. Ms. Blair was working with you to try to get you back in on, um, get you back in compliance with everything. And then we went to March 14th. We go to March 14th and went around. Everybody wanted me to release you off the GPS. So I released you off the GPS um, and we continued it. We get to May 18th, May 16th. And again, you're compliant. We, we go through that here. However, then things just start sort of falling apart because on the August 8th date, you don't show up. Yeah. And then, hold on. Sorry. And then August 15th, the, so I had issue a bench warrant. It's August 15th, which is the date we left on. Well, we set the bond at the 50,000 cash or surety. We had it on the 15th. Then we adjourned it to the 22nd. And here we are now. And you just don't seem to want to comply. Yeah. I was incarcerated since July the 1st. I've been in jail since July the 1st. One of the worst arguments you could possibly make. You, you got to let me out now because I was incarcerated on another charge. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he was transferred here from uh, Macomb okay. County. Yeah, I get it. Gallagher, uh, Attorney Gallagher's on another call. I mean, <laughs> I would uh, I would stop him if I could. Because he, but that was because you had picked up those other charges. <laughs> you had picked up other charges while on probation A, which is why you were in custody. I get it. I mean, I understand what you're saying to me, but you're just not compliant, sir. I mean, I'm hearing everything that you're saying, but you, you know, and on that July 1st date from the time you went into custody, that's when that's the date you were drinking. Okay, I opened a can of worms. I did. <laughs> and I think if you went through some of those police reports, you would see your behavior has by no means been stellar. I mean, not even close, quite frankly, um, to that. So I'm going to follow probation's recommendation. Um, but <laughs> not, uh, look at um, should the defendant's behavior <laughs> file a motion for an early release. It is there for the sentence of the court. Please, no. Sentence the defendant 365 days in jail. Credit 48. And it is to serve that balance. I will waive all remaining terms of probation and discharge it from probation that is without improvement. Thank you.
That's all we have for this morning. We will be back for this mm. afternoon's docket. Thank you, folks. Corks and recess. Hi, this is Ali with the Sovereign Citizen Patrol, and thanks to all your generous support, <laughs> I'm getting belly scratches. Stop it, Jira. So please remember to hit like and subscribe so I get some more. Okay. I want to call people of the state of Michigan versus Caleb Thomas Justice. Okay, so this is Mr. Justice, who's deaf, and uh, we've been through this. It's Judge Maribel's courtroom. He he needs glasses. He needs hearing aids. But I don't know. The, the guy never does himself any favors either. Charge of aggravated assault. Case number 22G00682SM. Zero, zero, <laughs> I guess I didn't know we were going to have interpreters today because... The last time Mr. Justice was in here, we used those headphones. He told me they worked really, really well. But in any event, uh, uh, let me swear in the interpreters. You solemnly swear or affirm you will give an accurate translation uh, to the court, to the defendant, uh, witnesses, and counsel. I do, sir. I do. I do. Identify yourself for the record. My name is Teresa Hill, Your Honor. T H E R E S A. Watch out. Katrina's in the house. And you're certified to interpret uh, American Sign Language? Yes, I hold the Michigan DEI 3, which is the highest certification in Michigan. I also have a legal endorsement, which is required by law in the state of Michigan. Okay. And you, ma'am? Uh, yes, my name is. Come up. Uh, are you picking her up? Come up a little closer so we can get you picked up on the mic. My name is Corey Foster, and that's C-O-R-I-F-O-S-T-E-R. Are you certified to do American Sign Language Interpretation? Yes, Your Honor. In I'm Michigan? I'm certified through the Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf, and I also have a Michigan legal endorsement. Okay, and you, ma'am? I'm Elizabeth Cardo. Katrina's now Twitter, Twitter famous. And are you a certified American Sign Language interpreter? Yes, I'm a nationally certified interpreter through Registry of Interpreters. And I have the legal endorsement to state that. Okay. All right. All right. Well, this is the date and time that we set for a plea in this matter. So. Mr. Uh, Wheaton, are you on this matter? I am. Uh, okay. So, as I understand it, this defendant uh, is going to plead guilty to the charge of attempted aggravated assault. Is that your understanding? That's what my understanding is based on the conversation I had with him, not Ten minutes ago. There's more than ten people in the courtroom, Judge. Who's in here that is not a defendant or a party to the case? Who are you? Uh, my name is Dylan Gibson. I'm a with them. Okay, and I guess I signed your permission, so to speak. These gentlemen that are entering the courtroom need to exit, please. There cannot be more than 10 people in the courtroom. Right. Both of you gentlemen that just entered need to exit. Oh, you know Katrina's is loving that. Uh, I'm going to Go. You got to go. You're not a party to the, any case here. Who are you, sir? It, it's interesting, too. They can really only get away with that because they're streaming on YouTube. Otherwise, the, 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 the courtroom is supposed to be public. But I will say they've given access. We're sitting here watching it right now. Okay. Anybody else? Right. Oh, Katrina hasn't had that much fun since she was hall monitor.
Let me swear you in, sir. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth to the best of your knowledge, understanding, and belief? Yes, I do. Okay. Let me just ask my interpreter a question. He's handcuffed. So how is he able to sign you? He can't, Your Honor. Okay. So how are you able to communicate with somebody who's in handcuffs who's an ASL uh, uh, user? Well, he can see me signing. He speaks for himself. I don't know. Some cases they take off the cuffs. Well, okay. Well, are you? Is there any difficulty with you communicating with them in, in cuffs? He said, "I, I don't have my hearing aids still." He said. Well, we know that. That's why we have the. Is the are the earphones turned on? They're okay, but. It, I still should have an interpreter just in case I missed everything. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. I don't know. I, I think that you I think that you're understanding me, aren't you? Yeah, I hear you somewhat, except for the right side is kind of quieter than the left side. Is there's there one no, knob on no, there? Judge, there's only one volume control. That must be his hearing impairment that's causing that. I don't know. Huh? Well, should we turn it up or, or whatever? Can we turn it up? But she's interpreting too. Your Honor, the volume control is on the headphones that Mr. Justice probably cannot reach while he's handcuffed. Can you need it. Turn it up. Interpreters need to move closer to him. All of those microphones that are on that side of the room are on. They don't have the lights on, but they can step forward so they can see behind that wall. Okay, is this is that any better? Thank, thank you, Stephen. Dying better. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, thank you. Good. All right. Yeah, I'm starting so to think that. So state your name for the record. Hey, my name is my name. Uh, I do think he's playing it a little bit, and you'll see as the hearing goes when he's not paying attention, he 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 never looks at the interpreter. I, I mean, he, he's, he he uses sign language, so he's not a liar. I mean, he wouldn't learn to sign if he wasn't deaf. I get that. But he can hear well enough, and he responds, and he never looks at the interpreter as this goes. And Caleb, comment, Justice. Okay. And you've had an opportunity to speak with your attorney today about this uh, plea. Is that true? Yeah. Right before I came in here, as a matter of fact, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, nailed it, Colin. You're going to plead to the charge of attempted aggravated assault. Yeah. Okay. Other than the plea agreement, has anybody promised you anything to get you to plead guilty? Yeah. Is anybody forcing you to plead guilty? Yeah. Has anybody threatened you to get you to plead guilty? Yeah. Has anybody told you, I'll go easier on you if you plead guilty? Do you understand that the maximum penalty for this charge is up to six months in jail and or a $500 fine and or one year of probation? I understand. Okay. All right. Have you... Looks like you reviewed this advice of rights form back on July 18th. Is that right? No. Nope. Is that yes? Yes. Yeah. Trevor is not saying anything. He didn't sign anything, Your Honor. Okay. All right. One of the things that we talked about, Mr. Wheaton, back on that day was. Um, what was going on with his felony case. I think that's why we didn't actually do the plea that day. So, uh, has that been taken into account? Mr. Wheat? Your Honor, I have not spoken to him before today. So if he spoke, uh, previously would have spoken to somebody else in our group, it wasn't me. Well, my question was, I didn't hear it, Judge. I apologize. We didn't do the plea. You were here on the 18th of July. You remember yeah, that day? I do. And it came to light, of course, that you have another felony case. Yeah. 
All right, because I arraigned you, I think, on it, correct? Yeah. All right. And we didn't go through with the plea that day in part because there was, uh, well, in part because it, uh, somebody maybe wanted to explore uh, doing a package deal that would include the felony. The issue is he will not stop breaking the law. He will not stop breaking the law. I've done a bunch of cases on this. The last time I, he got set a very low bond amount, I think he finally made it, got out, and then he got picked up on another charge. It's, it's unbelievable. Well, I'm wondering if that has happened. Uh, Your Honor, I, I don't know. <clears throat> well, that would have been between his felony-appointed counsel and the prosecutor, we would not have been involved in that negotiation. Uh, yes, you would, dummy. I, I, this is the guy who yells at, uh, at um, Judge Mirabal on a regular basis. He said, "Last we were here, there we were there was talk of a global settlement, uh, and of course there was." And he said, "Well, I wouldn't know anything about that." Yes, big dummy. A global settlement would mean uh, taking care of all of the outstanding charges. You would hear about it because you would have to sign off on it. It's just a, a dopey response, and and I only feel comfortable getting after this guy because he's so rude to the judge. So I guess we could ask uh, Mr. Justice. Well, actually, apparently not, or we wouldn't be here today. No, we would be because, you know, maybe there was something reached. I don't know. Uh, well, you're going to have to get uh, here. Bottom line, Judge. We, this office, this group, would not have been involved in those negotiations. Where is the felony case in the system right now, Mr. Justice? It's an argument he could make, but, you know, depending on the circumstances. But uh, I, I don't think it's a strong one, given the way he's responding to the judge and ignoring the interpreter. What is going on with my felony case? Yes. Um, there's a lawyer that I don't like, but I have to take him. He doesn't speak English very well. Um, he mumbled a lot. He old, but that's good. But anyway, <laughs> I haven't. Doesn't like his free felony attorney. He's old and he mumbles a lot. <laughs> but he's but he's got this young uh uh hot shot whippersnapper here on this misdemeanor charge <laughs> i gotta see this other attorney now new judge judge uh david something of the uh, uh circuit court new black everything now that would be like china okay, yeah, yeah. That was with the uh, attempting to disarm a police officer. They're doing forensics on that, and then the deadly weapon assault charge that season one and two is being worked on. And I also have a, uh, I have to pay a fine to McKay by October $1,100. There's a forensic uh, motion. Have you been ordered to have a forensic exam? That's what is supposed to happen between the three felony cases, yeah. Well, and I don't know how we can proceed with this. Well, we can't. I would agree. What did I just say? Well, that was, that was something that should have been taken care of between July 18th and now. Uh, that was the whole point. That was the whole point of a journey. Well, except getting to the forensic center that quick is not, <laughs> that is not likely to happen. Okay. Mr. Justice, we're going to get you some justice at some point. <laughs> Naughty. And do it for my unit. Well, and I can get new. I asked you about that before, and, and the last I knew, you lost them before you went to the jail. Right? I went, when I got kicked out of jail, I went one of the two. I'm trying to get the other one. 
He's really he's really putting me in mind of the defendant who didn't want to solve the problems and just wanted free rent. Uh, the the glasses and the the hearing aid. I'm sure they're the, they're not doing everything for him or whatever. But he he has he doesn't care about either one of them. But he does like to hold them as arguments as he commits crime and comes back in for the next arraignment. And they haven't found it yet. When I when I was out at the bus station, one of my hearing was flying out, and I I do. <laughs> It's just been one thing after another. About two weeks of being out of jail, I've been in hell. And I'm back in jail for another two weeks. Yeah. I got a feeling it's going to be longer than that with the forensic uh, motion. Your Honor, my, and I, I granted it has been a while, but my experience was it was anywhere from 10 to 12 weeks from request to actually get down there. One good. Actually get I, I like Judge Maribel just thrown out there. Yeah, I don't like your odds on that forensics motion. <laughs> He's right, but it just surprised me. <laughs> Judge, just a moment. I'm trying to find it. Okay. All right. His next date with Judge LaChana at Circuit Court is October 26th at 1 o'clock. It says it's set for a miscellaneous hearing, but that must be on the um, evaluation, Judge. Mm. There one. October 26th at 1 o'clock. Let's have a, um, a pre-trial on October 31st. What was that date, Jim? I think I said October 31st, Halloween. And that's the uh, disarming the police office? Uh, just a moment. I have to go back up to the top to see what the actual charge is. I want to report the case number so I don't have to hunt for it next time. Right. Yes, it's on disarming a peace officer. And would you like the case number, Judge? Yes. The case number is 22-050017-F, like Frank, H, like Henry. Okay. We'll set this for a pretrial for October 31st, 2022 at 9 a.m. And what I want to do with this... Um, I got a feeling that we're just going to, I don't know if we're going to be able to do anything big that day. It depends on. I what his bond is on this case. The bond on this matter is $1,000 1, personal recognizance. Could I request the court and send a 10% bond, so Mr. Uh, Justice gets credit on this case for the time from now to when we get this case done. He gets credit for his time in jail on this case. I'd ask for it to raise that to a 1,000 cashier or 10%. What does that mean? That means if you keep your PR bond, you can spend another six months in jail and it wouldn't get one day credit for it on this case. Okay, thank you. I understand. So I take it you're okay with that? Yes. All right. Uh, I'm also going to put on this bond condition sheet that the Genesee County Jail Med staff is to assist the defendant in retrieving. Uh, or uh, providing, uh, retrieving hearing aids or providing you my glass. But, uh, Mr. Judge, did you state that it's a 10% for $1,000? Yeah, it's going to be $1,000. Okay. I didn't hear you confirm that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I have to fill up one of those. Uh, but Mr. Justin, did the jail ever give you eyeglasses before? He didn't give an audible answer. He, he just signed no. Okay. I have not gotten glasses or hearing aids at all. I, yes, he gave the universal sign for no that everyone understands, <laughs> which is this. I know how to get new hearing aids, and I tell them how to, and they just look at me like I'm retarded. Well... I had spoken to the nurse at the jail before, 
back in July. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. I called. She said she'd look into it. But you got out of jail, but you picked up new charges since then, right? Yeah. Justice, how do we keep you out of trouble? I... The, the whole thing with that new charges was no no don't talk about it I, it's more of a it's more of a question for you to think about than to give an answer okay the no contact again with walter cook you understand that yeah i don't want to see it again what's that I, I don't want to see him again so you're good I, i'm not i want to do not assault him or harass him. No. I make sure to avoid him at all times. <laughs> it is. And if I go to the hospital, make sure he's not there. To my mm -hmm. I may very well see you October 31st. Halloween, baby. I said I'm juggling like five cases. <laughs> I know. I know. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. I was trying to clean up my mouth. All right. We'll see you in October. Thank you. Okay. All right. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Frankie is officially skeptical. All right. Who are the parties on Rudy Martinez? Rudy Jordan. Okay, so here we have Judge Boyd. She's awesome. I had an old video on her called Not Having It. I'll put I'll put a card up or a link to it or something. I haven't yet, but I will I will when the video's over. Uh, she, she's a cool judge, but this you got to watch this case just factually. You got to watch this unfold. It's unbelievable. All right, the court is calling 2022 CR 3271 State of Texas versus Rudy Martinez. That party is announced for the record for the state. Marcus Sanders. For the defense. Scott McCrum. All right. Are you Rudy Martinez? Yes. Are you Rudy Martinez? Yes, <laughs> All right. You entered a plea on uh, July 28th of no contest to aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The court found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty of court deferred finding you guilty. And we had applied for deferred adjudication. Uh, according to the fee bargaining agreement, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of six years. There's a fifteen hundred dollar fine. The state opposes your application for deferred adjudication, and they're taking two cases into consideration. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report, state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. All right, say any objections to the PSI report? Uh, no, Your Honor. Defense, any objections to the PSI report? No. All right. Uh State, do you have any uh witnesses? No, Your Honor. Defense, any defense? Yes, please, Judge. Angelique Martinez. All right, Ms. Martinez. Can you raise your right hand? We saw them swear upon the testimony here will be the truth, and that other people will help you, God. Thank you. All right, you're going to have to speak up. Can you lower your hand? State your name. My name is Angelique Martinez. All right, defense. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Martinez, how are you related to Rudy? Rudy is my husband. And how long have you been married? Uh, we got married in 2014. That makes it. I mean, just stop and think about this for a second. This guy, this this uh, man's wife, is forced to come testify to try to keep her husband out of jail. I mean, e e even if he makes it, then he's got to go face that. Woo! Yes, there was a young, uh, I believe, 12 year old when this happened in the vehicle with Mr. Martinez, named Cyrus. Who is Cyrus Martinez? Cyrus is my daughter. It's his daughter. His daughter? Biologically? His biological daughter. Okay. Uh, does she live with you in the home? She does. Uh, she, is she your biological daughter? No, sir, she's not. And uh, how, did, how long has Rudy had custody of Cyrus Martinez? Um, since Cyrus was maybe a year and two months, a year and four Agreed. months. That, Very close to a year old. Okay, so at about a year old, uh, is uh, Rudy took custody of Cyrus? Yes, sir. What was wrong with the biological mother that didn't have custody of Cyrus? Um, that choice was made just because he had a steady job and he was able to better provide 
to take care of her. So he took care of her on his own yes. from her about age of one year old. Mm -hmm. How old were, was Cyrus when you got married? Um, I can do some math here. So. Okay, so we got married on my 21st birthday. Seven, six or seven. Okay. Uh, and so from her age of one year old to her age of six or seven, uh, is it fair to say Rudy, Rudy raised her or was raising her by himself? Yeah, oh, it's fair to say that. Was her mother part of her life that you know of? <laughs> Not often. <laughs> Has her mother been a part of her life since you all have been married? Not often. Can I get can I get through one stream? Can I get through one without muting myself? And has oh. so Rudy was the main influence in raising Cyrus uh, from the time she was one year old. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. And how is Cyrus doing in school these days? She's doing really well. She's excelling in basketball. Her grades are A's and B's. Okay, I guess I was saying uh, to the question of what, why, why can't, you, why can you testify for somebody if you can't be forced to testify against them? And that is because it's your choice. You can choose to testify for somebody, but you can't be forced to testify against your 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 spouse. That's what I was saying. I don't know. Maybe I said it twice now. Who knows? I know I said it twice. I don't know if I was muted the first time. She has many friends. She play any other sports besides basketball? She also does track and field. She does soccer. And this is where she's even trying out the football team. Okay. And was a lot of that attributed to Rudy and what he has done raising her through the years? Um, like as far as her interests? Her interests in just doing well in school and in I mean, athletics. That's, that's their bonding time. That's how they play together. That's how they spend most of their time together is playing ball outside. Yeah, you know, it's only natural that you fall into these things. <laughs> and so I believe since uh, this offense occurred in July of last year, which is a little bit over a year ago. Yes. Sir. And Rudy's been on house arrest since then, correct? Yes, sir. Has he been able to participate with Cyrus uh, in the past year? No, he hasn't at all. How has that affected Cyrus and Rudy? Uh, for both of them, it's been devastating. Rudy, Cyrus. Yes, Gregory. I wasn't going to do a, a, a full uh, ickle on the topic. I, I'm just, I'm just giving the the overview. He's number one cheerleader. That's she wants to be there. He has always been at her practices, at her games, at any function, in the stands, cheering her on. You know, you can hear him above all the other parents. Does he ever miss any of her activities or games no. or something? To let me finish answering, Sorry. asking before you answer. Uh, does he ever miss any of her activities, games, practices, uh, any involvement whether whatsoever because of his interests? Absolutely not. She is uh, his greatest interest. When this incident occurred, uh, I'm sure they talked to you about it. <laughs> the incident that he's charged with here. Um, yes. Cyrus and Rudy talked to you about this, right? um, Cyrus and I haven't really talked about it. Rudy told me more or less what happened. No problem. It happened. Uh, and Ms. Martinez, uh, talk briefly about yours and Rudy's relationship through the years. How long have you known him? Um, so I met Rudy when I was 13 years old. Um, he's been a good friend of mine all these years. It was a long while to get to dating. Um, and I have had the pleasure of watching him grow as a human through these years. And tell the judge about some of the good qualities about Rudy and his relationship with you and with Cyrus. So uh, Rudy started grooming her at 13. That's what I got out of that. <laughs> He's an amazing work ethic. He is my best friend. He keeps me laughing. I don't know what I would do without his company. 
He really is the one who keeps me sane on a daily basis. Has he always kept work? Has he always kept employment? He's always kept employment. I had to support y'all financially. You'll hear all about it, John. Us financially. Have you ever had a problem with him going out and being out all night with the guys and stuff like that where he doesn't come home or doesn't fulfill his responsibilities at home? No, he's just not that kind of guy. This is weird to me as an attorney. Okay, he's leading her all day long, and there are two things. One is I'm not sure what what uh, what the parameters are in this type of hearing. This is for sentencing. Maybe maybe it's allowed, although I doubt it. Or it's just being indulged by the prosecutor because he he the prosecutor knows that um, you know or, or suspects that it's not helping their cause. Never any of that. Never any of that. He's always been a good husband to me. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell the judge about Rudy uh, before she decides how to sentence him? And Your Honor, I'm, I'm just wanting to ask you to give him a chance. I know that this, is, this situation is very bad, but we also have a 14-year-old girl at home about to be 14. It's her teenage years. She needs her father. I need my husband. I need his help supporting our household. I need my friend. I don't know what I would do if I lost him. Whether it be for a year or two years, I just don't know what I would do without him. I'll pass the witness. Any questions? Just a few, Judge. Uh, Ms. Martinez, what's your maiden name? It's Cantrell. Um, so are you the same Angelique Kentrell that is the victim in the case that Rudy Martinez was given the birth for? That is simple. Okay. So back in, I believe, 2012, he was placed on the birth for choking, strangling you, right? That is the charge. Was he a good husband when he did that to you? That's an isolated incident. And yes, so what? I don't know if you caught it just because it's lighter. So he, he first establishes her maiden name because he's he's got her as a victim in a prior charge. So she, she's sitting there talking about uh, saying all these glowing things about him. But uh, he got convicted of choking her. And, uh, you know, that, that's where we are. It's devastating. The prosecutor does it and does it very low key. No further questions. Just as to that issue, uh, that was in 2012, I believe you he said, right? I do not remember the exact year. And aside from that one incident, or before that incident, had he ever assaulted you or been violent with you in any way? No, he hadn't. After that is incident, uh, had he, has he ever been violent with you, physical, aggressive with you in any way? No, sir. Has he ever been violent, aggressive, physical with his daughter Cyrus in any way? Oh, absolutely not. That's worse. I didn't think of it. No, you're right. All right. Thank you so much for coming down to testify and giving me some insight into uh, him. Thank you. Giving me some insight into his prior convictions. <laughs> the prosecutor's like, nope, that's all I that's all I wanted to get out. I think I think it's enough. All right, I'll call your next witness. That's all. Rudy Martinez. And I guess I'll actually call Rudy Martinez. Right, can you raise your right hand? You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. All right, you can lower your hand. You're going to need to speak up. Yes, ma'am. All right, state your name for the record. Rudy Martinez. All right, defense. Rudy, on this incident, uh, you were driving, you had your daughter with you, correct? Yes, sir. And now that you, the seriousness of the charge, the fact that a firearm and shooting a firearm was involved, do you understand now, looking back on that, that you handled that situation <laughs> in the in a wrong way? Yes, sir. Uh, tell the judge, though, what you were feeling at that moment when this incident occurred. What led to that? Just the feeling of utmost distress and fear. Um, I didn't really know what to expect during that whole altercation. But other than that, just trying to keep my daughter safe. No. Oh, this is the second time through, and that, now that I know the rest of the story, it's just hard to listen to this nonsense that he's that he's spewing right now. What do you mean by keeping her safe? Why did you feel that that was necessary to keep her safe? Well, I mean, around where I live, a lot of things like that go on every day. Like what? Driving uh, recklessly, you know, people firing guns randomly. 
you know, and just the simple fact that that's just where my head went so fast. You know, I had my kid with me, like I said, you know, I know I shouldn't have handled it that way, but that's just where my head went after miles of being followed and messed with on the road. You know, I tried to even veer off to the right side of the only way on that particular road that I can get off of. And when I stopped my truck, it just came, it went on. And then that's where it made it all after a while ended. And then I just went home. Did you feel that the complaint witness was being more aggressive with her vehicle, putting your vehicle in more danger than you were to her at that point? Again, leading all day long. I, I, did, I, I really like the way the prosecutor handles this, and I don't know if that's strategic or if it's just very open in these sorts of hearings because I don't do them. But in a civil case, it, it, nobody would ever let you ask like that. Um, yes, that, that was the whole point of me even considering pulling out my firearm. That was the only because I, I almost lost control of my truck twice, you know, and that was enough for me to start reacting the way I was I, I reacted. Did you did your emotions raise because you felt your daughter's life was in danger? Definitely. Would you handle it differently now that you can see back on that situation with the level head and not emotional that you can't just resort to pulling out a firearm? Now, now that you've had to uh, plead guilty to a felony and you're sitting in front of uh, Judge Boyd, who's who's not uh, prone to nonsense, <laughs> would you handle this differently? Well, why, yes, yes, I would. Incidents like that, regardless of the danger it's causing on the highway. Yes, sir. Definitely. This entire process I've been through to happen, I can definitely see a better way to handle situations like that when they occur. Is there anything else you want to tell the judge uh, before uh, before I pass the witness? Um, just I apologize for my actions, and I know now what I did wrong. Just would like a uh, punishment. I mean, maybe it's just me, but you need eye contact to say you need eye contact with the judge. She's got your life in her hands. When you say you're apologizing for your actions, you've got to be looking at that woman. She can decide whether or not she wants to look back at you, but you have got to be looking at her. I, is it me? I, I mean, I, I I don't understand how people don't get this. That's what it is. Uh, Mr. Martinez, did you see the victim uh, pull out a point of weapon at you? <laughs> and you said that she was, I guess, where was the victim's car in relation to this your... This is perfect for you, John. You're, you are going to like this. Several, um, several places, so... I was in front, she was in back, almost the entire chase. And then she moved to the passengers, well, the remainder of the chase, that's my daughter's side. Okay. And so then my mind was going a thousand miles an hour. But no, I couldn't see nothing except when she would go enough back. And, and when I looked in my mirror, I would see the bird two times and it put me off. But other than that, that's all I saw was him. So when you fired the gun, you fired it across your daughter. No, oh, the passenger one, right? No. no. Okay, how did you it fire it? Your side. So how did it hit her vehicle if she was on your daughter's side of the vehicle? Because we had parked. So off 281. I mean, that's masterful by the prosecutor. Yeah, the facts, but he said, so you crossed your daughter, which is horrible. And he says, he says, no, which actually I think the prosecutor has it right in the first place, but it doesn't matter. He says, no, and then offers an alternate explanation, which also sucks. No, 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 I parked the car. I got out and shot, the, <laughs> shot at her. <laughs> oh, oh, well, well, that's so much better. There's access roads you can leave to. There's also like a medium, if you will. So if something happens to your vehicle, you can put your car there, you know, you can continue to drive. Why did you park if you thought that you were in danger? Why did I park? To see if she would keep going. At the time, again, I didn't know that this was a female, if it was a car full of boys, or one pump, or whatever. I didn't know who was in the car. That's my point. I was hoping that they would just leave me alone. Because two times, really bad, I almost lost control. And the second time, I, I was able to notice the traffic. Some of your Mr. Martinez, did you call the cops? No, I was trying to get my phone. I couldn't get my phone because it went under my seat. So you couldn't get your phone, but you could get a gun. My gun was closer to me. And then, so the the officers determined that the, the bullet went from the back of the vehicle, back right to the left. Um, so how can you explain that if she was following behind you the entire time? When I had stopped, she kept going, proceeding on the access road, like, lead off the highway. 
difference. So after that, that's when I discharged the oil. So when she was driving off is when you shot? No, she wasn't driving off. She was parked. I was, <laughs> she stopped and I stopped. You know, nothing happened. Now, this is seconds in mid case. My head's going a thousand miles an hour, like I said. I have my kidney claw. So that's my discharge moment. When we're both stopped. This is in Texas. She wasn't driving. She was tired of driving car. So that's not. Yeah. How many shots this car? He was lying around on his vehicle. All right, we're best ones. Nothing further. I have a question. Well, I have several questions. My first question is, since you had the prior choking case, which was a family violence case, and I'm sure there was an affirmative finding of family violence in that case, and with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own any weapons. Let's start with, why did you have a weapon even though you were not supposed to have one? Oh, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to have one. It had been years already since that. <laughs> he just told Judge Boyd, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to have a weapon. Like, she doesn't do this every day and isn't sharp as a tack. Good luck. Happened, and I didn't know that I wasn't able to have a firearm. <laughs> Dan, my other thing is, I always read the stipulations very well, and I always read the PSI report before sentencing. One, I reread the steps just to re-familiarize myself with things. And then, of course, I always read the PSI. And this is what the PSI report says. And it says almost the same thing as the stipulation says. They contacted the victim, and she provided a statement. She stated a vehicle driven by the defendant cut her off while she was driving her vehicle. Because of this, she honked her horn at the defendant, and she flipped the finger at the defendant. The defendant became very angry at her, and the defendant began waving a handgun and then shot the handgun towards the ground. After the defendant shot the ground, she exited the highway, and the defendant shot at her again. She was very scared because the defendant could have shot and killed her. The defendant did shoot her car one time, and she has a bullet hole in her car. Now, that's from the PSI report. And this is the narrative from the stipulations. Uh, while on uniform patrol, I was dispatched to the above listed location for a shooting in pro progress. Upon arrival to the location, I contacted the victim alongside Officer Sanchez and asked her what occurred. The victim stated she had just got off work and was heading home, going southbound on U.S. Highway 281 North. The victim stated when she entered the highway, suspect, that's you, had cut her off, and he and the victim began to flick each other off. Victim then stated the two began to yell at each other through each vehicle's windows. Victim stated suspect then began to drive aggressive and show signs of road rage. Victim stated suspect then began to drive in the right-hand shoulder, pulled up to the right of victim's vehicle, brandished a silver firearm, and shot at the ground one time. Victim then stated she took Warsbark Parkway, Nakomi, Rhapsody southbound exit from 281, and suspect continued to stay on the southbound main lanes of U.S. Highway 281 North in the right-hand shoulder. Victim stated suspect then brought his torso out of the driver's side window, extended his arm with the firearm, and fired what victim believed to be three or four shots at victim, with one bullet striking the back driver's side panel of vehicle of victim's vehicle and exiting the opposite side of the back right wheel well. Victim then stated she continued down U.S. Highway 281 North southbound access road, immediately entered the highway at the next available entrance ramp and continued to drive to the reported address. After gathering the incident details, I viewed where the bullet made entry on victim's vehicle. So I'm trying to figure out what is your issue, because I don't know how flipping people off and people can be mean when they drive, because people don't realize your goal in driving is to get from point A to point B and get there alive, and hopefully everybody else gets there alive. And guess what? When you get there is the time you were supposed to be there. So whether you need to be somewhere at 2 p.m., if you get there safely at 3 p.m., then that's fine. So 
I don't understand how flipping each other off or throwing the bird or whatever was doing, how that results in brandishing a gun. And based upon what I'm reading, and it doesn't matter to me if it was a female or male in the other car, but based upon what I'm reading, you knew there was a female in the car because based upon this. How do you think this is going for you, Sparky? Well, he makes it worse and starts to argue with the judge about whether or not it was a female in the car. You all were jawing back and forth at each other. That's what's false. Mm -hmm. right? That's what's, we, there's no way we could talk to each other. There was no way in that traffic. And okay, when, said, when, I, when I say talking to each other, I know you all are not, hey, how's your day going? Or, you know, forget you or whatever. But I know that when people are driving and they're angry, people can tell that you're shouting at them. You may not know what's being said. I'm sure people were shouting profanities. So I'm not saying there was a conversation where you got, got the noun, the verb, and the adverb, and the adjective, and it was a complete <laughs> sentence. But from what I'm reading, there was shouting going on. I mean, and you're saying no. I mean, she was behind me the whole time. I wish there was camera footage that I was told that was out. But I mean, if there was camera footage, you could you could see that she was behind me the entire time for miles and then got onto my daughter's side, which I tried my best to speed up and maneuver or do whatever I could to get her on my side. It wasn't happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I, was, I didn't cut her off at that specific light. To, to keep going straight, there's only a one lane to the left for everybody else who wants to take that lane and get off and get on 281. She was on her freaking phone and didn't go for a, my truck is a huge 1500 truck. It's huge. This is at least two of her cars. And you were upset that she no. was on her freaking phone. No, 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 no. Was not upset at all. I was having a, yeah, that, a very good day. All I do is went around her and went and proceeded to go. <laughs> That's all I did. I just went because she her. was on her freaking phone. I proceeded to go. I just went took the light because it's a very. But it was light. because she was on her freaking phone. That, I, I might have, I might have to clip that <laughs> from her because she she just won't let go because she was on her freaking phone and she's right. I get it. And I can see. I mean, I mean, I know that ticks some people off. Sometimes I see people driving and they're on their phones, and I'm like, you need to be paying attention to the road. But I don't flick them off. I didn't honk at the lady or nothing. I just went around. Okay. And went to light. And then she honks at me because we're at a still. Her car is in the intersection. But we're moving. It's just her car is now in the intersection. But as we proceed to get off the ramp, that's when the honking starts. I see her flipping me. I flip her. And it just went from there. You see her flipping you. She gave me a devil. What went from there, uh, went from uh, uh, her flipping him off to, to him pulling out uh, a gun and discharging it multiple times. And by the way, it's it's odd how it plays out, but you will see her before this is over. And then you flip her. Yeah. So you knew it was a female because you no, saw I, her. I, I only saw her hands. That's all I saw was hands. Okay. I can see nothing else but hands. All right. Again, not that it matters that it was a female or a male. You, you'll see her coming up. If all you saw was hands, you could tell this is a woman. I'm just trying to get a, a clear picture of where you're coming from. All right, is there anything you wish to, anything else you wish to say? Defense, any more questions? No more questions, Judge. All right, State, any more questions? No, Your Honor. All right, um, so the court will hear argument. State, you're opposed? Yes, Judge, we're asking you to deny the application. Um, it's obvious this version of the, the facts don't make sense. Um, this could have easily been a much more serious case where we're dealing with some sort of serious bodily injury or even death if the angles of the vehicle had been different. Um, he brought up a good point when he just testified that he was in some sort of big truck um, and she was in some um, sort of sedan. And so his, his <laughs> yes. supposed concern that she was running him off the road additionally doesn't make sense along with everything else that he said. Um, he's been given a, a second chance before he was placed on deferred for that assault choking. Um, he obviously has some sort of anger issue because, I mean, not knowing the facts of that case, in order for someone who's in a relationship to get to the point to where they're choking their significant other, they have anger issues. And he displayed that again in this particular case. Um, so we do not believe that he should be given a third chance and we're asking that you deny his I'm what, what you call a lay expert. Application. All right, just one moment. <laughs> Who's that in the corner? Does he need a UA? Uh, sir, what is your name? So it's Brandon Wright. Yes, what's your name? You. Yeah, you. Michael Duzer. Michael Duzer? Jensen. Jensen? 
Do you need a, um, a UA so we can see if there's anything in your system? All right, so. This is good. You'll see it develop. But a UA is a, is a urine analysis. This is just somebody napping in court, and she's having she's not having it. Oh, you're gonna have to wake up. A lot of people didn't get any sleep last night, but they're still awake and alert. So no more going to sleep in court. Do you understand? All right, we're back on the record. All right, defense judges no uh, there's no doubt that this uh was a bad situation these road rage things were scary i hate road rage situations and this one ended in the worst possible possible way and there's no way to minimize that he sees that now there's no excuse or no justification no no the worst possible way is that he kills her thank god that didn't happen um wh wh where is this guy's argument going i i don't get where he thinks this is helping to for what happened uh, but the issue is, do we send him to prison for it or place him on probation? Uh, I, I, I think the fact that you, you don't have someone in front of you who's not taking care of his kids, his family, working. In fact, he took custody of a one-year-old little girl that that girl's mother didn't even care about by himself. Yeah, then, then while driving that, that little girl, he pulls out a gun uh, on, yeah, on the highway and, and goes psychotic. Okay. Oh through six, seven years old, and and then with the help of his new wife till now, has that girl's flourishing. A B student, involved in athletics, loves her father, her father's there for her. Is, is the perfect father by all accounts, and I don't see any reason why we would disbelieve uh Thank you, the, the the witness we heard from. Uh because of that I think I I, I think there's conditions of a probation to make sure he that addressed this anger issue that he would have. It'd be a psychological counseling. There's in the pre-sentence report you, you you've seen what's the bipolar issue that maybe some medication. Uh, but there's he's there's more use to society outside with his family than there is to lock him up. And I think there's things we can do to protect ourselves uh, from him doing this again. It's been ten years since that other offense. He shouldn't have any offenses. I don't, but still, it's not like he's picking these up every year. It's not like he's up to no good. Uh, smokes marijuana, but other than that, no drug history. He's not a drug addict, not picking up DW. Another terrible argument an, and an unforced error. He smokes marijuana. That's not relevant. You don't need to say it. And it's completely 100% illegal in the state of Texas. Why in the hell are you offering that voluntarily? I mean, it's it, it's minor because it, the guy already sunk his own ship. But what are you thinking? Uh, I, I I just hope that that we can see to to keep him with his family. He works every day, uh, and and he's sorry about what happened. Fortunately, no one did get hurt. If she would have gotten hurt. Different story. Uh, it's alarming, I know, Judge. But I just I, I I hope we can see to it. It's not a prison case right now. Uh, he'll be on a short leash. This court, I know especially, if he messes up, there's always that uh, as a future consequence. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Martinez, I'm going to deny your application, find you guilty, sentence you to four years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine, time and money to run concurrent, taking consideration county court cause number 664677, 664679, give you credit for any time served. I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that with your, and I'm sorry, there's an affirmative finding of deadly weapon. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? I don't know. I, I don't practice criminal law. I certainly don't do it in Texas. I don't know what she had, but she knew what her sentence was. She, she sentences him to four years. The, the the wife and the attorney were acting like yeah, I, I get it they're making an argument but still I, they, they acted like two years was the outside I don't know if four years is maximum or what but that, that's where that's what she did to him four years did you review it and understand it yes. all right because this is a plea bargain agreement because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal you do not have the court's permission to appeal do you understand all right good luck to you. Judge, we haven't picked them in. 
Okay, so this is really weird. Now, what they're going to have is is the, the, the defendant comes in right now, and it's sort of interesting and not very long, so I, I put it on there. But it's it, this is the order it came in on the call. So I, I generally speaking, you do the vi- victim impact statement prior, I would assume. Um, but uh, they, they just catch her and think, okay, fine, let's, let's let you do your victim impact statement. But she already rung him up, and she doesn't change her ruling. Okay. All right. Uh, they want to do a vi- there's a victim impact um, and who is is it Miss Baker? Martinez. There there's no Martinez on the Zoom. All right, you may begin, Miss Martinez. Um, thank you all for inviting me. This is the one he wasn't sure if it was a woman or not. Well, I only saw her hand. Well, I I don't care and I don't see her hand, but if you see her hand, it's a woman's hand. Plain and simple. She's tiny, okay? To be here today. Um, I actually did have a hard time coming in, so I do appreciate you reworking with me with that. Um, you know, I didn't realize how much this was actually going to impact my life. Um, I do want to say, like, thank you, though, because it, you know, it did change me. It clearly taught me to be better and to not do things like that. Um, I'm sorry if that's hard for you to hear. Uh, Clearly, you don't want to look at me when you say when I say that. So um, I understand how hard it could be to own up to things. But, you know, I I do wish you well and I do hope you the best. Um, At the end of the day, I know people only do things. That's it's very interesting the way she does it. I don't know. She said she says it like I, I she says it in a way it's like, oh, I wish you the best and everything. But it's sort of it sort of grinds on them at the same time. You know, it's, it's odd. But the reason why he did is even even if they didn't realize that she was there, I think they didn't realize she was there. They would have let her go first had they known. But once they saw that she was there, they want to allow people their day in court, whatever it is. And I guess theoretically, they drug him back out. I cut it out just to make it a little bit shorter. They drug him back out. But theoretically, I guess she could she could probably change the sentence if she wanted to based on that. But she had already decided what the sentence was. Because they could be hurting or they could be going through something. So if you are, you know, you're in my thoughts and prayers. Um, Again, I didn't realize the impact this was going to have on me, but it has made my life a lot better because of this incident. I quit my job because I did not feel safe going over there to that side of town. Um, But because of that, I was able to get a better position and I'm working in a a higher remote company and I'm making more money than I ever have been. So um, again, I do appreciate the things that you have done for me. I'm I'm sorry for the things that you're going through. Um, I, again, I actually had a really hard time making it, really it here is. today, but because of the actions that you made and the support that I have at home and the support that I have through my loved ones, they did encourage me to be here. So I do wish you well, and I do wish you the best. And again, I, I appreciate you guys um, taking the time to allow me to be here as well. Thank you. Well, there you have it. I thought I thought the victim uh, impact statement at the end was was really kind of strange. I think she wanted to have this moment of forgiveness, but he was being a prick. So then she couldn't, it, it, and she didn't intend this. But then she said, like someone said in there, like like she's flexing on him. Then she's just like, okay, I'll I'm gonna stick with my ostensibly nice statement. But I, but I think you're a loser because you don't have the stones to even look at me while I'm giving my victim impact statement. So I think I, that's the way I read it. Tell me, tell me what you guys think. I'm curious. The way I read her weird victim impact statement was. She came into it with a good heart, try, looking for for redemption and forgiveness, and the guy wasn't playing ball, and it pissed her off. That's the way I read it. So then she she didn't switch the the to- she didn't switch the message, but she switched the tone. That that's the way I read it. I don't know. It was very it was very very strange. Um, Judge Boyd, who I had before, and and I really like. I I think she did a good job. I like. I said I don't know the sentencing. I'm I'm seeing on there from Texas uh, Railroad, who who's, who who uh, uh, frankly seems to know things, saying that that they could have um, sentenced up to ten years. But you know his attorney's asking for, and, and his wife is asking for probation. She rings him up for four. 
that yeah i mean you, maybe you could do more but that's not nothing that's a judge taking it seriously and she did she did in that um not having it same thing uh, that that guy was a thief and he and he kept stealing stuff from people uh judge boyd i, I who i i think is a very intelligent good judge but there's it, it, it you that's not the judge you want to be in front of with no con, contrition and guilty of sin i'll, I'll tell you that <laughs> she she does not accept that nonsense whatsoever i mean she, she just sees it the way it is you you could see by the way she she went after him i still like i still like the, the your mid she was on the freaking phone <laughs> And she's right. She she can just see through the situation. She's she's very um oh I don't know mild mannered and sweet, but she understands the world. She's no dummy whatsoever. She's also very she's uh, she's got a nice veneer of of sophistication on her, which is appropriate. But she under she's also street smart. She's not going to reduce herself to talking that way or something like that, but she is not stupid. She lives in reality, and and these people think that because she's got like a a nice shirt and a nice purse that, that she's never seen anything in the world. It's just not so. This woman lives in reality, and and she is not the one you try to snow on these issues. Oh, all right. Thank you all for coming out. That was fun. I, that was a really long one, but I just wanted to show them all. I wanted to show them all, and none of them were particularly fun. Although, although there's moments, I'm, I'm, so, I, I'm to, honestly the the fake the fake crying in the first video I thought was hilarious, and I held back on the, on the off chance that, that there's really something wrong with the child because I don't want to be insensitive. But I, I, from a manly perspective, watching watching a guy cry like that to try to get out of jail is hilarious. <laughs> it is. It is. I honest to God wish his child the best, but uh, the the crying bit it it didn't work for me. All right, you guys. Thank you all. I will see you soon.